Mini business units and goal alignment. Delivering value through mini business units. Understanding the alignment of the organization to the needs of the customer and the business. Goal alignment in mini business units. What is an MBU and why does it matter? We are going to draw a parallel between a human organism and an organization and we will look at the MBU as an organic cell, a mini enterprise and a leadership incubator. We will look at horizontal alignment, who is the customer, the supplier. Then we'll take a look at vertical alignment, who does what, what is the role of the different organizational layers in the company. And finally, we'll look at the structure of the organization through the use of mini business units, function versus process. Chapter 1. What is an MBU? An MBU is a team with a leader. It operates like a mini enterprise and has a mission, internal customers and suppliers. The MBU operates processes and makes decisions. It tracks performance, risk, quality, speed, cost and people development and engagement. The performance is aligned with the company objectives. The team develops people, solves problems and improves processes. The diagram below shows an example of operational MBUs linked together to continually deliver the right product to the customer on time and at the right price. In this segment, we are going to compare an organization to the human organism in order to better understand an MBU. The human organism needs a purpose. Without one, a person cannot be fulfilled nor flourish. An example would be serving others, achievements, or bettering oneself. Organisms are made up of various systems that enable the organism to fulfill its purpose. Examples of systems would be digestive, respiratory, or circulatory. The organization is also designed with a purpose. An example of the organization's purpose could be customer satisfaction or stakeholder satisfaction, and stakeholder satisfaction could mean shareholders or employees. The organization needs systems and processes. The diagram is a representation of the key systems and processes in the organization. The diagram is used in long-range planning and is part of understanding the context of the organization. An example of systems and processes would be quality management systems, product realization, and order reconciliation. Going back to the organism. Organs are part of systems that are self-contained and have specific vital functions. Some organs also support different systems, such as the liver. Examples of organs would be stomach, lungs, and heart. There are different functions in the organization that support different systems, such as manufacturing, procurement, and finance. An organ is made up of large quantities of cells, that are the organism's smallest structural and functional units, such as the heartbeat cell. The MBU is to the organization what a cell is to the organism, which is the smallest structural and functional unit. Examples of many business units would be maintenance, assembling, and dispatch. Here we have, side by side, diagrams of a human cell and an MBU. As you can see, the human cell is far more complex than an MBU, but they share characteristics. For example, the cell has a membrane that protects it from outside aggression. Similarly, the MBU has to protect itself from risk. We have to manage risk at MBU level. Just a side question to think about. What would be to the MBU the DNA to a cell? Within the MBU, environment, risk, material, manpower, and machines are managed and brought together by method and measurement. Those familiar with root cause analysis will recognize the six traditional elements of the fishbone diagram. Milieu, or mother nature, material, manpower, machine, measurement, and method. Let's do an exercise. Divide your team into groups of three or four, and take ten minutes to brainstorm. Present to the team your findings on the next segment. Note that the methods applied by the team are standards that describe how to operate the MBU. For example, you would use standard operating procedure, work instruction, and one-point lesson, among others. 
Every MBU has a mission that is a specific output to an internal or external customer. There are several inputs to fulfill its mission. You have inputs such as a two-way information and communication channel with other MBUs and external stakeholders. Examples of communication would be instructions to produce, non-conformance advice, and operational reporting or feedback. You will have raw input such as raw material, service, or data. You would have operational inputs such as utilities like water and electricity, spares, and consumables like oil and paper. The team in the MBU applies its methods to operate and improve their processes and ensure that the team members are competent and engaged. The processes convert inputs into output. Along with output, you will have waste, such as heat, byproduct, effluent waste, or rejects. Your output could be the semi-finished or finished product, service, or information to other MBUs or to the external customer. Let's look at the MBU as a healthy mini-enterprise that generates a profit. Inputs and outputs are classified into cost and income items. Information and communication are cost items. If you are not convinced, look at the cost of an ERP system and management salaries. Raw and operational inputs are also cost items. The MBU itself is also a cost item. For example, you have salaries, buildings, cost of managing risk, training and maintenance. Waste can be considered both a cost and income item, considering that you can reuse heat, recycle or reuse waste, or sell byproducts. But it's always more cost effective to minimize waste in the process. And finally, the output of the MBU is an income. It's a great achievement for an organization when MBU teams report their monthly profit and loss statements. It is the fruit of years of refining smart systems and processes and nurturing an empowered workforce. How can the MBU be an empowerment nursery, a leadership incubator? Each MBU carries the DNA of the entire organization. The DNA is the values, approach to process improvement, people development, customer service, etc. In other words, the culture of the organization. Team members in the MBU are exposed to the same practice routines as that of the section, department, and organization. Through this, management identifies leadership potential and develops team members into future leaders through the daily practice of management routines. The MBU is a leadership incubator. Chapter 2 Horizontal Alignment What is the mission and purpose of a business? To satisfy the customer is the mission and purpose of every business. All key processes contribute to creating value for the customer. But what is this value and how do we measure it? First, the product or service meets the customer requirements. Second, it is readily available when they want it. Third, it is correctly priced. For the organization, it means that they manage the quality of their product or service, the speed of the processes, for example, performance, throughput, output, and lead times, and its total cost. The organization does not operate in a vacuum. It is dependent on their supplier's performance. The suppliers also need to deliver their product or service to specification on time at the right price. For example, Poor quality raw material will affect the efficiency of internal processes, resulting in bad quality, late deliveries, and an increase in production costs. That's why the organization has to manage its supplier's relationship. Overall, the performance of the value chain that links the customer, company, and supplier is dependent in the alignment of quality, speed, and cost. This is horizontal alignment. What is the meaning of horizontal alignment within the organization? Everyone is a customer for somebody or a supplier to somebody. Each operational MBU is linked to its internal supplier and customer. Each internal customer expects its supplier to deliver quality of product or service on time. The performance of the value chain linking the end customer to the supplier is as strong as the weakest MBU. 
Problems arise between MBUs due to the failure of the supplier to deliver based on mutual expectations. Therefore, the processes are misaligned. This is called interface noise. Interestingly, the symptom is miscommunication between functions or MBUs and can be quite noisy. Service level agreements drawn up front between suppliers and customers assist in smoothing their relationship and improve performance. Horizontal alignment is essential to continually satisfy customer expectation. When horizontal misalignment occurs, the output is compromised and the customer is disappointed. Take a moment in small groups to discuss what horizontal misalignment is, the possible causes, possible effects, and countermeasures. Present your findings to the team. Chapter 3. Vertical Alignment Before we start, keep in mind what is the role of a leader. A leader's job is to help his people. In vertical alignment, the business focuses on ensuring that all MBUs at all levels operate harmoniously with the company's breakthrough, that is, strategic objectives. The organization is built onto three different layers. We're going to read from the bottom up. The first layer is the strategic one. It answers the why question of the business. Why do we do what we do? The responsibility of the top management team is to provide direction, define structure, sequence activities, allocate resources, and build capacity. The second layer is systemic and is where systems and processes are managed and improved. That layer answers how do we do what we do. Management and professionals actively improve and sustain the bips and bops of the business, best improvement practices and best operating practices. The teams in that layer ensure their operational teams are supported. They also ensure good planning and compliance to systems. As we've seen previously in the course, Management's job is to improve the system and support its people. We then have the situational or operational layer, where the hands reach out to the customer and make the product. This is where money is made and value is created. These people reduce risk practically. Let's summarize the layers. The strategic layer answers the question, why do we do what we do? The systemic layer answers, how do we do what we do? And the situational layer answers, what do we do? Let's take a look at the MBU teams across the different levels. Examples of level one teams would be production team weaving carpets, journalists in a newsroom producing news feed, or people interacting with customers in a call center. The MBU ones at level one meet daily to review the previous day's performance, find root cause and solutions to the previous and current day's problems, and plan their current day. The team leaders of that section will meet with their manager daily in the MBU2 to ensure that level one teams get the support required to operate efficiently. The level two team is usually cross-functional as representation of support MBUs is present, enabling cross-functional issues to be addressed immediately. The level two team plans for the week. The support MBUs are, for example, finance and HR. They have both a situational and a systemic role. The level three team plans for the week and makes sure business priorities are being carried out. Managers attend BU3 meetings not less than once a week to evaluate the business's performance, prioritize activities, and drive improvement projects. BU4 is made up of the top management team. They meet not less than monthly. The business performance is reviewed as well as progress toward achieving breakthrough objectives. The level four team plans for the month and the year. As you might have noticed, we leave out the mini parts in MBU for level three and four MBUs. This is because there's only one business unit at these levels. On this segment, we have turned the traditional organizational pyramid on its head because it is the leader's job to support their teams. All the MBUs are physically linked, where the leader of one MBU is the member of the next level's MBU. The team leader of the level 1 MBU will be a member of the level 2 MBU, and the manager who is the leader of MBU 2 will be a member of the BU3. And finally, the senior manager of the BU3 team will be a member of the BU4 team.
The reason why we have this link is to ensure effective and quick communication, which provides for good escalation and feedback. Here, we have vertical alignment. Every MBU performing a specific role to achieve the overall business objectives. This is vertical alignment. When vertical misalignment occurs, the output is compromised and the customer is disappointed. Take a moment in small groups to discuss what vertical misalignment is, the possible causes, possible effects, and countermeasures. Present your findings to the team. This is a list that helps you distinguish the difference between core functions, MBU1s, and support functions, MBUs. But this list can be debated. If you don't have an MBU structure in your organization, take some time in small groups to define what the MBU structure could look like. Brainstorm and present your ideas to the team. With the help of a facilitator, draw the structure on a large board. Chapter 4. Structure the organization with MBUs. In this segment, we are going to bring together horizontal and vertical alignment. At different organizational layers, there are different processes. Their output contributes to customer satisfaction. Examples of operational processes would be order fulfillment and new product development. Examples of systemic processes would be internal auditing and process improvement. Examples of strategic processes would be long-range planning. Horizontal alignment has a customer-centered view. The different functions take responsibility for specific, operational, and improvement objectives aligned with the overall business objectives. This is vertical alignment. At the crossroad of the functions and processes are the MBUs that take operational and improvement responsibility for process segments. They listen to the voice of the customer, the processes, and the business. They also develop and empower their employees. In the vertical alignment, the functions need to be effective, which is doing the right thing at all levels. In the horizontal alignment, the processes need to be efficient, doing things right to the customer's satisfaction. This is overall alignment. At the end of a long presentation, here are some points to take home. MBUs are to the organization what the cells are to the human organism. They deliver value and reduce risk. Horizontal alignment is achieved when the processes and systems efficiently deliver improved quality, speed and cost from the internal suppliers to internal customers and ultimately to the end customer satisfaction. Vertical alignment is achieved when all MBUs are improving their people and processes towards effectively achieving the company objectives and long-range vision.